What you build with AI and tools like Cursor or NAN doesn't need millions of users to be valuable. It's powerful even when it's just for yourself. Forget the absolutely zero code hype. If you ask the AI for a ramen, it will give you whichever ramen it wants to. But the more you know how to make a tankotsu ramen, obviously the best one, the closer you'll be to getting the final result you want. In this video, I'll show you exactly how I specified the ingredients to Claude 3.7 Sonet inside Cursor to generate three simple projects. The first thing I'll show you is the teleprompter. This one took about like 20 minutes to build inside of Cursor, and it's this right here. It's a control panel where I can control everything that goes on with the word. So let me place in something like that. Now hit start and you'll see that everything is transmitted over to my phone. And then I can place this phone over at my teleprompter and read it as I go through each line. And here's where it really comes in handy because if I go over to my keyboard and hit the left arrow, it pauses. And then if I hit the left arrow once more, it goes back and that's when I mess up and get some word wrong. Then I can hit the space bar and then it'll start over once again. I can change the font size. I can mirror the text. I can also toggle between light mode and dark mode. And I can also control the speed at which the text is rolling. So I can click on 1.25x, I can click on 2x, and then it will display accordingly. So if you wanted to create a tool like this, I suppose you could just use like raw HTML and JavaScript, but a framework like Next.js just makes things much, much easier. So heading over to the package.json, you'll see all the packages that I used, but mainly I use the socket.io. This is what allows me to have an event occurring on one page. And this event is also transmitted over to my cell phone in another page. And this wouldn't be possible if you weren't using a library such as socket.io. There are other libraries that does this as well, but since this is a more popular library, there are more issues that are reported. So because of this, I suppose that DLMs are trained with much more data for it to provide me a better code around this particular package. And for this project, I'm also using Shad CNUI, and this is just the best way to introduce them. So it is not a component library because if you were to use a component library, it would go along the lines of you install a package from NPM, import the components and use them in your app. This approach works well until you need to customize a component to fit your design system or require one that isn't included in the library. Basically what it's saying is that depending on the component library that you pick, you won't have any control over what's happening inside of the component. So you won't be able to change that. If I were to ask Cursor to change everything from the control panel into a new brutalism style, then it would do so by just going inside these components that we have access to the actual code and change it in here. Then it would all be applied throughout my entire project, or at least in the places that I used these components. And it's super easy to install it. So just head over to the installation tab, pick Next.js. Then it depends if you're using PNPM, NPM, Yarn, or Bun. It, it seems like PNPM has been a bit faster lately, so a clean and install of NPM takes a really large amount of time. And then we have PNPM winning against NPM and Yarn basically every single time. Is that right? Yeah, apparently not here in the with node modules, but this is really overthinking it. Just use whatever package manager that you want. And honestly, I'm going through this, but if you specify this over to cursor, especially if you're using Claude, because I've noticed that Claude 3.7 and even the 3.5 model has a training that uses Shad CN UI much better than the other models. So just by specifying that you want to use this, it will already install everything for you and you can just get your project running with all these components. Now that we're done with the teleprompter, let's go over to the YouTube outlier tool. Now I'd say that every content creator should have a tool similar to this. And now with AI, you can create this really fast. All you really need to know is a bit of NAN, how to integrate and get data over from the YouTube API, and then how to store everything inside Postgres and then fetch that out of Postgres to then gather everything up and create a dashboard like this one. In this video right here, how to build web apps fast, NAN backend plus level of frontend, you'll understand all this dynamic of gathering the data over with NAN, sending it over to the database, and then creating an endpoint at which you can fetch using Lovable. But you don't have to do all this. So as soon as you have your endpoint or you just have the Postgres database, you can import that inside of Cursor. So in this project, you'll notice that I have a schema.prisma. And all I did was really install Prisma inside of my Next.js project and then 
pull everything from my current database. So that database was already created inside of NAN. All I had to do was import that schema so that my Next.js projects understood everything that was going on in my database and could then provide me an easy way to create both API routes for me to insert data and for me to fetch data from that database. So the end result is a YouTube competitor dashboard where as I scroll down, you'll see that it loads more and more videos. And this is really important for performance wise. I can also specify, so I only want outliers and I'm considering an outlier multiplier of two. What does this mean? Basically, I calculate the average number of views a specific channel received over the past three months. And then based on that average number of views, the outlier is going to be any video that has twice the amount of average views. So if I toggle this on, it will then load all the videos that are outliers and you'll see that they have a different coloring. Most of them are from Nick Sarev because he is in fact creating awesome content out there. Now this time frame is set to all time. If I just wanted the past two weeks, I can toggle that and then I'll get the fresh new videos and I can understand like what's trending in my current market. So then I went on and included an analyze button. This analyze button just gets me every single word that was used multiple times. So NAN was used twice. Cell and hours were both words that were used twice. And this just helps me get a faster vision of what are the trending words. For this case, not really. Maybe NAN is a trending word, but sometimes we have a lot more outliers, especially if I maybe set an outlier multiplier by 1.2, we'll have more videos. And then if I click on the analyze button, you'll see that NAN is still on top, but then we have queen three. And this might indicate to me that queen three might be a trending topic. And then it just makes it easier for me to wake up, look at the outlier dashboard and understand what am I going to record for that day. Nice, so now we went through the YouTube outlier tool. Let's go over to the Xcali draw extensions. So this one is the simplest one of all. It, I created this in, let's say like 15 minutes. And I only took that amount of time because I was explaining this as a live build inside of the AI Forge community. This was my entire prompt. So build a Chrome extension that does the following. And then I specify that it should target only xcalidraw.com because I don't want this extension to be bugging other websites that I go into. All it has to do is just remove some elements from the screen. I suppose that there might be an extension that already does this and we can maybe toggle on and off some specific element, but I haven't found that yet. If you have, please let me know in the comment section. But yeah, instead of me reading all this prompt to you, let me just show you what it does. It's really simple. If you use Xcali Draw, you'll notice that your bar up here will always show. Mine's only shows when I move the cursor up there. And then there's a specific trigger for me to move the cursor past a certain part of the top of the page and then that toolbar will show. So that's that's all, that's all it does. And all it really took was one prompt because this second prompt down here was just me telling it, ignore the icons, don't add that unless Google Chrome really needs it. Because when you send this over, if you were to send this as a production ready plugin for the Chrome store, then you'll have to place in it icons. I believe that Cursor or Cloud 3.7 Sonnet identifies this and tries to include that inside of the project, but you really don't need it. So just specify that, especially because as I said in the beginning, this is just a project for it to work inside of your computer. You're not going to sell this. Other people won't be using it. It's just you. You can customize it the way you want and the way that it works for you. This works for me just fine because honestly, this bar up here really bothered me, not only because of the bar. Let me show you this inside of the Edge browser. Mine is in Portuguese, please don't mind that. But I never click on these buttons. And this message over here, why is this message always appearing? Like I don't need it. I already understand what each tool does. And also the toolbar, why is it always appearing even though I don't need to click it immediately? I only need to click it when I move my mouse up there. So that was just something that bothered me, might not bother anyone else on earth, but it was easily solved by the so-called vibe coding. And what I wrote down here about HTML elements, all you really need for you to do something like this, if you're using some tool on the web that is bothering you, some aspect or something that's showing up that you don't want to see because you record videos. In my case, it's because I always record using Xcali Draw. You can just head over to the inspect part and then find the element that's bothering you. If it's this one, you can type in a display none. And this is just to check if it's this element right here. And if it is, then you can just grab this class, but always check if this class isn't being used by another element because then you'll just hide both elements and that's not what you want. 
then just head over to cursor, specify that specific class that you want to hide. And that's basically it. Now imagine someone doing this without AI, like a developer could clearly do this just really fine, but someone that doesn't have any tech knowledge to do everything, like write this entire code right here, they would spend some hours. And I'm referring to the guy that does not know how to code at all. And I feel like this is a really silly example, but even this silly example took all this code from the AI. Probably this could be much cleaner, but you got the idea. Bear in mind that despite all the negativity towards vibe coding, towards creating things at scale, towards possible user issues, you can create a lot of different tools that can help yourself. Saving time, money, or just hiding a toolbar that you really hate. That is it for today. Thanks for watching. If it helped you at all, please consider leaving a like and I'll see you in the next video. Till then.